In this video, let us learn about memory allocation in case of objects. Now let us learn what happens in the code when we create new objects in Java. So Java manages two different areas in the memory. One is called heap. And this is where we store the objects. The other area is called the stack. And this is where we store the primitive types. And also the variables that store references to objects that are stored in the heap. We can store them on the stack. Now let us understand this with the help of code that we wrote in the previous video. Now when Java runtime executes this line of code present on line 3, first it will evaluate what we have on the right side of assignment operator which is this. So it will create a new lamp object and it will get allocated on the heap at some memory location. So let me help you in visualizing this. So when we say lamp lamp equals new lamp now this right side part creates a new object on the heap. Let us say the address of this object on the heap is 0x100. So this is present on the heap. Then Java runtime is going to execute the left hand side part of this line of code. Here it will allocate some memory on the stack. And in this memory location it will store the address of the lamp object which is 0x100. So now in this memory location that is present on the stack, we are storing the address of the lamp object which is 0x100 that is sitting on the heap. So this variable here is lamp and it is referencing the lamp object that is sitting on the heap. That is also one of the reasons why we refer to these variables as reference types because these variables do not store the actual values. Contrary to this, primitive types are different when we declare an integer variable say integer a and set this to 2 that integer is stored on the stack and that value that we have is stored in that memory location now let us do one interesting thing let us go back to our code and create a new instance of the lamp class so right inside our main class let us declare another lamp variable so lamp lamp 2 and set this to the lamp instance that we had earlier created. So in this example both the lamp and lamp2 will reference the same object on the heap. So let us visualize this. So when we say lamp lamp2 equals lamp. So here we are saying whatever memory location the reference lamp is pointing at make sure that lamp2 also points to that very memory location. So here on the stack we will have a new reference lamp2 or lamp2 variable and this also holds the memory location of the object that is stored on the heap which is our lamp object. So here also we will have 0x100. So in this example both the lamp and the lamp2 references are referencing the same object on the heap which is this one. To verify that let us print the hash code of both of our references in order to see whether they do point to the same object on the heap or not. So back in my editor let us say system.out.println lamp.hashcode and then another print line lamp2.hashcode. So let us run the program to see the output. You can see the hash code for both the references match each other because they point to the exact same object on the heap. So in essence here we don't have two objects on the heap but instead we have two variables lamp and lamp2 that are referencing the same object on the heap. Also if we mutate the object using one of the references say lamp2 the changes to the object will be visible through other reference as well which is lamp and vice versa. This we have already discussed in the video on data types in Java. Now let us talk about deallocation of memory. Let me trace back the same diagram. So lamp and lamp2 references. So this is our stack and this is our heap. And on the heap we have our 
new lamp object that is sitting at a memory address of 0x100 on the heap and both our lamp and lamp2 references are pointing to the exact same object on the heap so the same object that is sitting at a memory location 0x100 on the heap so here we have the address 0x100 and 0x100 now here we don't have to manually deallocate the memory that we allocated java will automatically take care of that the concept behind this is that when we are done with a method the java runtime will immediately remove all the variables that are stored on the stack so here in our code once we are done executing the main function both the lamp and lamp2 references will get immediately removed from the stack this ends up in a situation where we have an object in the heap and there are no references to this object so let me remove these references because they no longer exist now once this object becomes unusable for a certain period of time Java will automatically remove the object on the heap by using a process called as garbage collection garbage collection so if we have unused objects on the heap unused objects on the heap their deallocation will be automatically taken care of by the Java runtime using garbage collector so this was all about memory allocation and deallocation in Java if you like the video do give it a thumbs up or comment down below if you have any query don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let's catch up in the very next one.